The vision, making people's lives better by unleashing the power of Cummins. And that's made Cummins a global power leader. That vision comes from our mission of motivating people to act like owners and to work together. Exceeding customer expectations by being first to market with the best products. Working as partners with our customers to make sure they succeed. Demanding that everything we do leads to a cleaner, healthier, safer environment. We'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about Cummins, who we are, how we became the company we are today, and the future of Cummins. For more than 85 years, Cummins has been a leader in diesel power generation. That leadership has come through the individual devotion of Cummins personnel to innovation and Cummins earned reputation for advancement through technology. To truly understand who we are, it's important to know something of our history. You learn the lessons from the past, but you don't fall in love with the past because we are into one of those rare periods of a rapid, bewildering change. And we have to be composed of people who uh, enjoy change uh, and uh, who enjoy risk and some hazard and understand that the really prudent way to operate a business is to be the first fellow to change and not the last fellow. First fellow that changes is going to make a lot of money. The last fellow that changes is going to find it's too late. This tradition has deep roots. We were started by an inventor and a local banker. Clessy Cummins, the company namesake, inventor, and mechanical genius, was an innovator. He came to Columbus, Indiana in 1904, and in 1908 was hired by W.G. Irwin, whose family owned the only bank in Columbus. While working for the Irwin family, Clessy became convinced that an engine technology invented by Rudolf Diesel in the 1890s was promising for its fuel economy and durability. With the backing of W.G. Irwin, Clessy secured manufacturing rights from a Dutch diesel licensor named Veed. And on February 3, 1919, the Cummins Engine Company was born. In 1929, the Great Crash ushered in an era of depression. To avert bankruptcy, Clessy mounted a diesel engine in a used Packard limousine to demonstrate to W.G. Irwin the potential of their venture and to encourage Irwin to continue providing financing. On Christmas Day, 1929, Clessy's ingenuity paid off. That day, Irwin went for a ride in America's first diesel-powered automobile. He decided to persevere, and from then on, he never looked back. Clessy went on to prove the potential of the diesel-powered automobile by setting a diesel speed record at Daytona Beach. He took a Cummins-powered truck coast to coast on a mere $11.22 worth of fuel. And in 1931, a Cummins diesel engine set an endurance record of over 13,000 miles. In 1937, 18 years after starting, the company made its first profit. The difficulties of starting and building a new company soon gave way to the challenges of growing that company into the world's largest independent engine producer. To do this, Cummins had to outdistance the competition, a decision that meant taking and maintaining the lead in technology. There were maybe 30 or 40 companies who were trying to do the same thing we were in, in diesels, high-speed diesels. Most of those names you don't know. You never heard of American Monovalve, you never heard much of Paul Scott. Buda, Walker, Shaw, and Hercules were well financed, but didn't do the research at the intense pace that you can now look back and see it, it, uh, that the industry required. The company made a commitment to proving the worth of the Cummins diesel engine by undertaking a major expansion of its research lab. And this commitment continued until 1969, 
when Cummins completed construction of its technical center. This $22 million technical center is the foundation of a continued commitment of the long-held Cummins philosophy to make our products obsolete through innovation. This commitment to innovative technology has continued into this century as Cummins continues to invest in research and design. By strategically placing technical centers and factories around the world, Cummins has built a worldwide network that is second to none. Our diverse workforce and world-class engineering spark ingenuity that brings innovation and excellence to every product and service. Our progress in developing innovative technology has allowed us to serve a broader range of customers. Cummins, through aggressive research and development, has remained agile in adapting to changing customer needs. An example of this came in the early 1980s, when Chairman Henry Schott and President Jim Henderson put together a daring plan to shift into a new market, small and mid-range engines. I can remember going to the board of directors, it wasn't the last time I was in High Soprano with the board, uh, when I tried to explain to them we wanted to undertake a billion dollar program when the total market value of the company was 240 million. Half of it was in the, in the new small engine. That's what we called You Bet Your Company. And that's what you called You Bet Your Company because if you're wrong about that, there was really no way home. And it was high risk because not only was the investment disproportional to the size of the company, but we were entering in a brand new arena. The challenge in pursuing this strategy was to make Cummins competitive with low-cost foreign manufacturers. The development and growth of the B-Series engine is a perfect example of how Cummins fought off foreign rivals by introducing new, smaller engines and reinvesting millions in rethinking the entire manufacturing environment. The B-Series engine has achieved overwhelming global success. From the time the B-Series went on the market, it has maintained an ever-growing market share. To date, Cummins has over one and a half million B-Series engines in the Dodge Ram. In order to survive in the market today, we're really confronted with trying to serve two masters. The first is to try to satisfy government relations and emissions compliance. The second master, of course, is our customer, who expects from us low cost and high performing products. From 1970 and really through the next decade, emissions control was and will be a key component of the product profile of every product we produce. Now, fortunately for Cummins, we have seen emissions compliance really as a means to creative and new technologies. Our engineers every day are challenged to create solutions for the customer and for the environment. Now whenever it appears that both of these masters cannot be served with the current technology, we are really well prepared with skill and tools to pioneer new systems. Our company demands that everything we do leads to a cleaner, healthier, safer environment. At Cummins, innovation is at the core of everything we do. We start with the five critical subsystems, combustion, air handling, fuel systems, electronic controls, and exhaust after treatment. No other engine company has all five of these subsystem technologies in-house. We bring them together in system integration using powerful analysis-led design tools that allow us to optimize the designs for each application. We use Six Sigma tools in technology development and in product design as we optimize our designs as well. But the thing we know at Cummins is that processes and computers don't design engines. People do. We hire the best engineers around the world. We give them the best work environment and the best tools. They start every project with the voice of the customer to focus our innovation and to understand how we best deliver the technology that is right for each customer application. That's how we deliver innovation you can depend on. The type of company Cummins is now has placed it in the position to remain a global power leader in the future. We recognize the need to invest in the right technology so that we may bring high-performing, high-quality engines to the marketplace. That decision has come at a price. We made tough decisions to cut other programs so we could focus our resources on launching a superior product. Do you know where our success comes from? It's our ability to listen to our customers. Through product and service excellence, 
customers can depend on Cummins to do what we say we will do. There's an individual commitment to innovation here at Cummins that's contagious. It's great to see so many people working toward a common goal. The only way we succeed is if the customer succeeds. That doesn't happen unless we dedicate ourselves to helping the customer beyond the sale. The bottom line is that without effective customer support, little else matters. Sometimes I think about all the dedicated people who work so hard to make our products. Quality is not a word to be taken lightly. At Cummins, it's the only way we do business. I take pride in everything that leaves the production line. It might sound funny, but I think it's not only a Cummins engine, it's my engine. Making people's lives better by unleashing the power of Cummins. This is Cummins. This is our vision. And this vision has made Cummins a global power leader. Oh,